Hey, welcome back to the channel, guys. This is the inside of my organ console, and it's all open like this because, unfortunately, we had a little incident. Incident. Uh, I was having trouble getting some of the MIDI functions to work and just some of the internal functions of the, uh, of the console to work, and it wasn't, it wasn't sending any messages to Hauptwerk. Uh, so I was running through a series of diagnostics. Um, they're actually onboard diagnostics with this Baldwin D422. And as it was running one of the uh, memory tests, I started to hear that kind of uh, definitive sizzling, crackling, and popping sound that means something very bad is happening. I came around here and I found uh, that it was releasing some of the magic smoke that made it work. So... Uh, let's go have a look at the power supply that I've already removed. I'll show you what I think happened, and we're going to make an attempt to uh, repair it. Let's go. Ooh, a power supply. All right, guys, so I'm not an electronics expert, so take everything I'm about to say with a grain of salt. This is just kind of a fun project to see if I can fix this uh, for the $20 in components that I had to buy before. Uh, having to replace it for a lot more money than that. Um, so, basically, I think a capacitor failed or, or something else failed that caused a, a surge through a diode, and the diode ruptured. Um, first of all, this is a diode uh, that's not ruptured. This is the one that was right beside it. And basically, a diode is an electronic component that allows electricity to only flow through it in one direction rather in, than in both directions. And so you have the anode side, and that's where uh, the power comes in, and you have the cathode side, that's where it goes out, right? Well, this is what happened to D3, diode number three. And um, I believe the arrangement here, even though they're just all kind of in a line, I believe that they are set up as a full bridge rectifier. Uh, and when this overcurrent situation happened, well, I guess I popped it. So if you, um, if you take a close look here, first of all, you'll notice I've already removed quite a few components. I removed uh, eight capacitors, a couple of really big ones, um, some varying sizes ones. Uh, and I removed those two bad diodes. And if you look closely, you can see right here um, the soldering pads for those two diodes are melted and uh, burnt. So it definitely got hot. Not only that, it melted and lifted the tracing in a couple of places. So right here between the anodes of several of the diodes there, that melted and lifted. Um, between the cathode of D3 and the positive side of uh, capacitor number 9 there, that lifted and I removed it because it was so badly damaged. Same thing here between C10, the positive side of that capacitor, and then it jumps to the other side of the board and actually connects to the cathode here on D5. Um, and there's also another one uh, that goes over to a, uh, another pin connection for a different board. Um, so those, I'm, I'm, I mean, there, there's, a, there's better ways to do this if you're like good at this stuff, but I don't really uh, had a lot of experience with this, so I'm just going to use jumper wires and solder them to the components to, to make those connections. Um, you know, uh, I'm not entirely confident that the repair is going to work, um, but I think it's worth a try. It's $20 in components to uh, get some new capacitors. You know, like I said, there's eight of them of varying sizes that are going to be replaced. Uh, and I, you know, I've got three replacement diodes that I believe are specced properly. So I'll at least start with replacing the two um, that were bad for sure and having a spare in case I find that another's bad. So, you know what? Uh, I figure it's worth a try for the $20 worth of parts. So here we go. Let's give it a shot.
All right, well, here it is, the moment of truth. I honestly expect it to be either still not functioning at all or more snap, crackles, and pops, but uh, there is only one way to find out. So here we go. I figured out what I did wrong last time and what went wrong. Um, <clears throat> I had accidentally reversed the polarity of one of the uh, capacitors. Stupid, stupid mistake on my part. Um, fortunately, I still had the old capacitors, and th that particular one I, I didn't really suspect was bad, but I figured I would just replace them all while I was at it. So, anyway, put the old one on, which should still be good. And, um, well, here's round two. Let's see what happens. She's still dead. tried a whole bunch of different things here in my crude attempt at a repair, so this is going to be the, uh, the last attempt. Here we go. I think we already popped a fuse. Yeah. Last try. Alright guys, so kind of late night update here. Um, I started this project at about 3.30 this afternoon and it's, uh, well it's going on, uh, oh gosh, it's going on 2 a.m. Well, anyway, uh, ended up having to take the power supply up and pull everything back out and um, kind of draw up a schematic. I don't have a schematic for it, so I had to kind of uh, make one. I found that there was actually more broken tracing than I had realized, so ended up with like 16 jumper cables on the thing to finally uh, get it back together. So anyway, I think it's time for that uh, big moment of truth again. So, and I'm done for the night, whether it works or not. So here we go. Let's see. some issues but you know that's progress my general cancel works my presets work so pistons are working So tomorrow's another day, we'll figure out, I, I, uh, who knows, I may even just have a ribbon cable in the wrong spot at this time of the night, I don't know. But uh, I'm kind of stoked, it works. 
Well guys, obviously that's not a perfect repair. Um, still got a little work to do, but um, I'm happy for today and I will uh, keep you updated as I kind of figure out what, what else might be going on here. But in the meantime, I can, I can at least practice a little bit again. So, all right, take care. See you next time. Thank you.